Hello, my name is Chris Hogan. I'm with the HDF group, and I'm going to talk about the Hermes project, which is uh, an NSF funded collaboration between the HDF group and the Illinois Institute of Technology. So I'll start with a simple example application so we can get an idea of how Hermes might be able to help and show an example of typical problems that Hermes is trying to solve. Then I'll give an overview of the Hermes ecosystem. And finally, I'll just talk about where we are with development and what our future plans are. So the example application I'll talk about is very simple. It's just a write once workload. Think of it as a checkpoint phase or something where you have a compute phase and then you have a slow IO phase. And this just runs over and over in a loop. And the reason the IO phase is slow is because, well, with the compute phase, you're working with memory, which is the top of this pyramid here, which represents the fastest media. And then with the IO phase, you're working with the parallel file system backed by hard disks, which is at the bottom of the pyramid and represents the slowest media in the cluster. So how can we how can we narrow this IO performance gap from the tip of this pyramid to the base of the pyramid? Uh, well, uh, if you look at modern systems, there are there is a lot of hardware in between uh, those two extremes. There are things like local NVMEs, uh, 3D crosspoint, burst buffers backed by SSDs. So the solution is to utilize that stuff. Um, now, in this case, for this application, I think the ideal solution would be uh, you you go through the compute phase, and then for the the I/O phase, you just write to the fastest thing available. So, write to this top tier here. Once that's full, you start writing to NVMEs, and once that's full, so on. So, just get the I/O into storage, and then continue your compute phase. And then asynchronously take that data from this fast storage and flush it to the parallel file system. And as long as your compute, as long as you can overlap with enough compute, then you'll see significant speed ups. That's the ideal solution. Um, now, how do we get to that solution? Well, you, of course, have to rewrite your app. And moreover, you have to update that application every time new hardware is added to your cluster or every time you want to run it on a different machine, which is, of course, unsustainable. So the idea of Hermes is, hey, let's let's take let's make use of all of this extra storage that we have and let's do it completely transparently to applications so that people don't even need to know anything about it and no code changes are required. So if we apply Hermes to this uh, simple application, what happens? Uh, well, to use Hermes with this application, we, ne we need two things. First, we run the application uh, and LD preload a Hermes adapter library. And adapter is just a word we use to interface existing code with the Hermes library. So we run with uh, LD preload, and then we have to write a configuration file that just tells Hermes what, what kind of resources are available in the cluster. Um, and the effect of that will be your writes will be intercepted by Hermes. And rather than going to the parallel file system, they will just get dumped to the fastest uh, storage you have available. And furthermore, since we know about our IO pattern, we know that once we buffer this, we don't need it anymore. We can immediately flush it to the parallel file system. We can set an uh, environment variable, which effectively is a hint to Hermes to say, hey, just flush this out as soon as you get it. We don't need it anymore. And that has the effect of transferring IO asynchronously, uh, transferring data asynchronously from this fast storage to the parallel file system. So as long as your compute, as long as you can overlap the I.O. with enough compute, you'll see significant speed ups with no application changes. Uh, on top of that, if you have new hardware added to your cluster or you're running on a different machine with different hardware, you just add uh, that some information to the Hermes configuration file 
rerun and Hermes will pick up that extra hardware as buffering space um, without any problems. So that's an example of how Hermes can help. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, an overview of Hermes. I, I, I mentioned adapters. Again, these are uh, these adapters are ways to use Hermes with existing applications. And some applications may use standard I.O., for example, fopen, fread, fwrite. We have a Hermes adapter for those applications. We have one for POSIX, uh, open, read, write, p read, p write, for example. We have one for MPI, I.O. And unfortunately, at the moment, we only support MPitch uh, for MPI, I.O., but in the future, we will support all implementations. And then we have a Hermes virtual file driver for HDF5 applications. Um, you can uh, dynamically uh, load the Hermes VFD and your HDF5 application will write to Hermes, the Hermes buffering resources rather than the final destination. And we also plan to create a vol, which will be basically sitting on top of this VFD and providing hints uh, and extra optimizations to Hermes so that it can be smarter about IO. So all this is for existing applications requiring no code changes. Of course, if you want to write a new application uh, and take advantage of Hermes, we also offer a C++ API. Um, this allows you to write new code and have complete control of your hierarchy and basically do perfect buffering. It, it, essentially, it extends your RAM so you can the more you know about your I.O. pattern, the smarter you can handle things. And additionally, if you add hardware or change systems, again, that's just a change in the configuration file. No need to rewrite the application. And the API is designed very simply. You're just putting data into the buffering system. You're getting data out of the buffering system. You're deleting data. At its core, that's it. There are a lot more complicated things you can do uh, the more you know about what you want to do, you can add automatic compression, things like that. But uh, at its base, it's very simple. So the roadmap for this project, currently we are, we've done several beta releases. We're at version 0 0.7 right now. We are on a monthly release schedule and we tend to alternate those releases by having one bug fix release, and then the next month is usually a new feature and back and forth. We plan to be feature complete this month, so wrapping up all new development this month. And then over the summer, our focus will be testing applications on real machines and testing scalability on real machines. And the goal is to have version 1.0 ready uh, around October. And if you'd like to try it out, here is the uh, GitHub repo. And again, this is beta software, so please report issues. That will really help us move toward version 1.0. You can uh, open issues in, the, in our GitHub repository. And the most important documentation uh, when you're starting out is the getting started guide, which is in the wiki of the GitHub. And that document will walk you through a using IOR as an example application to generate IO workloads and letting Hermes, hooking Hermes up with IOR and intercepting IO, things like that. Uh, that is all. All these links will be available in the uh, in this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, any questions? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, so uh, this uh, on paper, it seems uh, almost too good to be true. So certainly I will be trying that out. Uh, thanks very much. L looking forward. Thank you. Uh, OK. And maybe, uh, Chris, you want to say a few words? Some people here might wonder, well, 
how does this, does it depend on MPI? Can you, can you say a little bit about the underlying implementation? Yeah, it, uh, it depends on MPI, um, but it doesn't transfer data with MPI. The data transfers are done with uh, RPC and it uses uh, the Mochi libraries, which can take advantage of things like RDMA. So the MPI is, is basically just kind of coordinate all the processes when they start up and when they shut down. Otherwise, uh, there's no MPI going on. It's all R RPC. Right. And the reason I brought this up is if we get asked, or we, we have been asked several times already and say, well, does this work only for HPC type workloads? And the answer is no, it's not limited to that. So in fact, if there is a follow on uh, to Hermes, we are definitely looking at sort of cloud-based boats because there are deep storage hierarchies, obviously not only on HPC systems. The moment you move to the cloud, you have a zoo of storage tiers and so forth. And and by the way, I don't know if that came across. This is a distributed system. It's not single processor or something. So it's a distributed system and the the nodes, the Hermes nodes, as we call them, they communicate with each other and so forth. And um, any any other questions? Yeah. yeah. There's another question coming for you, Chris. Hold on. We, we would have a use case with a, a single thread, because uh, we have the data coming out at a single, from a single link. Would this be scalable, uh, downscalable to having uh, data coming from a single source, high speed? Yeah, yeah. So in the sense that, yes, so we could try using the Hermes VFD, with, which at this point is single, uh, mm. it, it doesn't use MPI mm. at all. And it's like a VFD, so the changes to your existing code would be minimal. You mm -hmm. just create a file access property list and say, use the Hermes VFD rather than default okay. VFD. And then your configuration file would basically specify the additional mm. storage resources that you want to utilize mm. for buffering. And that could be extra memory, it could be PMEM, it could be burst buffer, it could be something like that. You know. So what do you, and, and what is the minimum configuration? If you have, RAM, could you use RAM and uh, a file system? Or, you know, could you just have a two-tier system? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Chris, do you, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, yeah, you can even have one tier, RAM only or any anything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. It's in a way, if you want to do out of core computation without writing the code to do out of core, you could use Hermes for that. Uh, because, yeah, you can expand your storage pool uh, to use any kind of additional resources. And, yeah. Other questions? Uh, are there any other questions online? They're on. Oh, there's some, something here in the chat. No. Oh, there was a there was a question about onion. Let's see. Uh, oh, please, Sam. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, in, in a scenario where, where you have a single writer and multiple readers, do I understand correctly that uh, Hermes will help us to get the lowest latency between the writers and the readers? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Essentially, with as... the current. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, no, all I wanted to say, yes. Yes, definitely with the current swimmer implementation because that doesn't know anything about the VFD layer. So if you load the Hermes VFD, that sits below the swimmer implementation. So that should just work. With the new swimmer implementation, that wouldn't work because the Hermes VFD is terminal, and but the um, VFD swimmer would 
also be prominent. It's not too. Okay. So yeah, the answer is try it with the existing swimmer and tell us how how you how it went. 